Welcome to my Celestron Nexstar 127 SLT review. Today I'm going to be sharing with you as much as I possibly can about this telescope, from its technical capabilities to how it works, to my own personal experiences with it, and also what you can expect to see should you proceed to buy and use this telescope. So let's get started. Firstly, I just want to talk about the setup. Now, I was really, really impressed with kind of how easy that was. Um, I actually found it to be one of the easiest uh, in terms of telescope setups, and I've actually bought and used several different telescopes to date. It took me about 10 minutes. There's no tools required, and it was quite logical as well. A lot of the telescope kind of come pre-assembled too, which is always appreciated. In terms of the alignment process, which is obviously a huge part, uh, an aspect of this particular telescope, being a computerised telescope and all, it also was quite quick and simple. The Skyline technology and hand control panel walks you through the entire process, and I did that during the day and it wasn't too difficult at all. Now on to the technical specifications of this telescope, because that's so, so important as to its kind of design and what it's actually truly capable of. Now, this telescope operates via a 127mm or 5 inch Maxitov Cassegrain optical tube, so that's on here. Now, I won't delve too much into that design in this video, but here is a high level of what you need to know. This optical design includes a lens and a mirror. Now, this helps to ensure images are bright, sharp and provided in high contrast and virtually free of chromatic aberration. You also do not need to frequently collimate it either, which is the case with some other telescope designs. Now a few words on the computerization aspect. This telescope features a single fork arm altazimut mount, okay, which allows the telescope to track your desired objects as they appear to move across the sky. You can use the hand control to automatically track any of the 40,000 celestial objects that are included in the database. And what's also beneficial is that you can also see what celestial objects are currently visible based on your exact time and location. So you plug those into the hand control and it all works off of that. In terms of power and how this is kind of operated, you have two options. The first is you can either add eight AA batteries into this component section here. If I take that off, I'll show you them. So I've added eight in there. Alternatively, you can get a power tank, which is um, kind of via, uh, it's, a, it's a power supply, like a, a rechargeable battery, if you like. Now, both of which do not come included. Now onto the accessories that you get with it. You get everything you need, including a red dot finder scope, a star diagonal, which is in there at the moment, and two eyepieces. So I've got the 25mm eyepiece in there now. You also get a 9mm eyepiece too. Okay. The two eyepieces offer different magnifications for low or high powered observing. So 25mm gives you a wider field of view, 9mm obviously a more magnified view. So it's good to use different ones at different times for different purposes. Now the star diagonal provides a right side up view and a more comfortable viewing angle when looking up at the sky. So that's beneficial too. Now the star pointer, red dot finoscope, is there to help you quickly center an object in your eyepiece for easier observing. So with all that said, now I just want to walk you through some of the things I like about it and then I'll turn to some of those things that I've been a little bit disappointed with. Firstly, the pros. So image quality and versatility. The 127 SLT is great for planets and stars. The quality of the images of such has been consistently impressive and I'll walk you through what I've been able to see with this telescope shortly. Secondly, the ease of use. So as I've mentioned, the setup, straightforward, didn't take me too long and just the whole means of operating the computerised mount I have found personally to be very, very straightforward uh, and I've been able to observe much quicker than I have with previous telescopes I got in the past. Now, some people, there is a learning curve to this, um, and some people find it to be more challenging than, say, I have, uh, and other people have, but that's just something that I had to share, kind of personal experience there. 
I also really feel like at its price point you're getting a lot of value here. As an example, the Nexstar 5SE, which is a Schmidt Cassegrain design, is pretty much twice the price of this telescope, despite boasting similar performance and even having a, you know, this telescope actually has a higher aperture than the 5SE. So I think that's kind of important to draw out if you compare this telescope to others on the market. Now, in terms of the cons of it, there's a couple to, to be mindful of. Firstly is the stability issues. The mount can be a little bit wobbly, um, particularly with the tripod when it is fully extended. So I've got it fully extended now. Thankfully, I've got a flat patio surface, but a lot of people do find that it can get a little bit wobbly, especially if there's any kind of wind as well. Thankfully, this can be mitigated. Um, the way that you would do that is not actually extending the, the tripod legs fully, and you can also add weights to stabilize the tripod too. The other kind of downside is that it's probably a good idea to get some upgrades. So you're probably gonna to want to invest in some new eyepieces and even consider getting a Barlow lens in order to maximize your views. So for instance, a 32 millimeter will give you some additional and wider field of view and medium focal length eyepieces are my suggestions here. Now in terms of alignment, as I've said, I found that to be quite straightforward, but some people do report that this can be tricky and can require several attempts. And some users have reported issues with just using the controller in general. Again, not my personal experiences, but I just thought I'd mention it in this video. Some taller users, so I'm about five foot 10, uh, so it's been absolutely fine for me, but some taller users do mention that the tripod legs, it would be better if they were a little bit longer. So there are, yeah, some people say it's too short, so, but obviously you need to bear in mind your height. If you're a tall user above six foot, it may be uh, an issue for you. Um, and the other thing just to, be, just to mention is as a computerized telescope, there is no manual mode. So you, you're gonna have to use it, use the, the telescope via the computerization mounts. You know, there's no way of kind of manually tracking. So whether or that not that's an issue to you, whether or not you expect to be able to use it manually is, you know, that's over to you. Um, but that is just something to be mindful of. So you have a lack of control in that respect. So what are some of the best things that you can see with a telescope? Well, with long focal length, a Maxitov Cassegrain, the, S -S -C the SCT has a relatively narrow field of view. So it does make the moon, the planets, globular clusters and planetary nebula such as M27 the best targets. So just be mindful of that, okay? In terms of specifics, I've enjoyed observing the lunar surface, Venus and its phases, the polar caps on Mars, Jupiter and its four moons, and Saturn with its rings. They're all great targets and what I'd recommend that you try and look for with this telescope. It can also be used due to the, the optics, it can also be used for land-based spotting. Uh, so if you want to use this for kind of wildlife observations, you can use it for that too, which is good to know. So who do I think this telescope is best for? Um, I think this telescope is best for beginners. Uh, anyone who is looking for, you know, who's new to astronomy and is looking for a simple means of kind of getting into the hobby without having to go through the kind of um, the learning curve that comes with other um, manually operated designs. I also feel like it's great for casual hobbyists. So anyone who kind of wants, you know, it's very, very portable, it's quite light. Anyone who wants, and, and it's easy to set up. So anyone who wants to kind of have a quick viewing session and doesn't want to have to go through all the the long extended process that may come with other telescopes too uh, so it's great for impromptu stargazing um, and it's, it's relatively straightforward alignment process so some other quick recommendations the key to enjoying your next star 127 SLT is good star alignment so the red dot finder is for getting the target star into the field of view okay so you need to make the most of that you can practice alignment in the daytime by just assuming that you have pointed the scope at your first target star. So I would recommend that you do that. Um, and you can go through all the alignment steps without seeing an actual star. Just bear that in mind. So I would probably do that in the day, if you, especially if you're using this uh, first time around. I'd also recommend checking out the manual that comes with it. It's got very good instructions in terms of the alignment and for improving uh, the go-to slews after alignment too. And lastly, just be patient. It may take a while to learn how to properly use your SLT um, and the mount, and it can be confusing to newbies, but just that's like the case with any telescope. Um, they've all got their kind of learning curve. Just, you know, just expect that it may take a little bit of time. It hasn't really for me, but it's something to be mindful of. 
So I hope this video was useful. This, this is the Celestron Next R127 SLT. This has been my review. I hope it's been useful and over to you.